welcome to Florida Craft Art and to the presentation today of SACWA. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Florida Craft Art. First, I'm Katie Dietz. I'm the director of Florida Craft Art, the executive director. Uh, we are a nonprofit gallery located in St. Petersburg. We have about 250 of fine craft Florida artists in our Florida Artist Gallery, and we have an exhibition gallery with about eight exhibitions a year. It's accompanied usually by lectures and workshops. We also do professionally guided mural tours, both walking and, and uh, bike. Upstairs, we have 19 artist studios, and we have an annual craft art festival in November that has, it's the weekend before Thanksgiving, and it has uh, about 110 artists from around the country. Admission is free to our gallery. So now I'd like to introduce Diane Powers-Harris, who will talk to you about SACWA. Thank you, Katie. The SACWA Florida region um, appreciates Florida Craft Art hosting the artist question answered in fiber as our premier venue. Uh, you provided a fabulous opportunity for us to share these artworks in your beautiful and bright gallery. Thank you. SACWA was established in 1989 as a nonprofit organization by our incomparable and internationally acclaimed art quilt founder, Yvonne Porcella. Uh, to augment the uh, bullet points, I will be including um, a SACWA's mission statement. <clears throat> to promote art quilts to major art publications, museums, and galleries, SACWA's mission is to promote the art quilt, which they define as a creative visual work that is layered and stitched, or that references this form of stitched layered structure. To educate the public about art quilts, our vision is that the art quilt is universally respected as a fine art medium. SACWA's core values are excellence, innovation, integrity, and inclusion. To serve as a forum for the professional development of quilt artists, over the past 30 years, SACWA has grown into a dynamic and active community of over 4,000 artists, curators, collectors, and art professionals located around the world. To act as a resource for curators, dealers, consultants, teachers, students, and collectors, with our exhibitions, resources, publications, and membership opportunities, we seek to increase the public's appreciation for the art quilt and to support our members in their artistic and professional growth. For more information, I invite you to visit SACWA's website, which is www.sacwa.com. SACWA's annual conference was originally planned as an in-person um, event to take place right here in St. Petersburg, Florida. However, due to lingering COVID concerns, it was changed to an online event open to SACWA members around the world. Although not held in sunny Florida, SACWA's local conference committee has been working for the last two years to ensure the Floridian flavor is felt in every way. The conference features keynote speakers, artist talks, studio tours, the spotlight auction of small artworks, and online chat sessions. SACWA's publications include the Art Quilt Quarterly, which is a magazine filled with beautiful artwork and informative articles for collectors, art venues, museums, professional artists, and art enthusiasts. It's available via subscription through SACWA. The SACWA Journal is published quarterly in full color. It is mailed to members as part of our membership and is also available online. The exhibit, The Artist Question, is on display at Florida Craft Art through May 14th. The Artist Question is a project of SACWA's Florida region and to tie in with the uh, conference theme, Bridging the Gulf, the Gulf regions of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas were invited to participate. The exhibition theme was presented to those who were interested as to create a work of, creating a work of art begins with a question. The artist might ask, what idea is important for me to communicate? What concept do I want to explore? What emotions do I want to experience and invoke in the viewer? What interests me? Or perhaps the artist might contemplate, why do we? What would happen if? What is the meaning of? Each work of art resolves the or examines the questions asked by the artist. Answers unfold differently is, as artists created compositions which address their unique queries. Artists also had the size requirement. The works must be exactly 30 inches wide, the height or um, 
length could vary from 30 to 60 inches. Additionally, artists were asked to begin their artist statement with the questions inspiring the work entered. Statements focused on concepts, not media or technique. Additionally, to draw the viewer in, each artwork had to be titled to reflect the artist's answer to the root question. About the jurying process, blind jurying is used for SACWA exhibits, for all of them. What is blind jurying, you might ask? No, the juror doesn't cover his eyes and just throw darts to make his selections. Blind jurying means no personal information is provided, such as the artist's name or where they live. The juror is only provided with the full and detailed images, artist statement, and the materials and techniques used. This allows the juror to select the best exhibition from his interpretation of the exhibit theme in conjunction with the submitted artwork. And for those of you who have inquiring minds, the artist question had 74 quilts entered by 52 artists with 29 quilts juried. Now we need a juror. Unfortunately, our juror, Zach Foster, had a prior commitment, making him unable to attend. But I, let me tell you a bit about him. Raised in rural North Carolina and now living in Brooklyn, New York, Zach Foster is a self-taught artist whose work draws on Southern textile traditions while incorporating found fabrics and natural dyes with an eye for sustainability. His practice, he practices an approach to design that is intuitive and improvisational, and he is drawn to preserving the stories of quilts and specializes in memory quilts. His work has been featured in various magazines, websites, and galleries. Learn more about his work in his monthly Motivation for the Maker at www.zachfoster.com slash newsletter. Okay, here we are at the cover art for our um, exhibit catalog. And this is a prelude to a brief pictorial tour um, of the exhibit as it hangs in the gallery. As an exhibit teaser, the next several slides are a series of installation shots. Um, okay, so now let's start our tour with, uh, of the exhibit with a full wide angle installation shot, which is what you're looking at now. The, the exhibit is awesome, isn't it? This is an example of the wall cards hung beside each quilt. Info included is a photo of the artist with a bio, artist statement, as well as materials and techniques used. Now we'll shift our viewpoint to wall close-ups. While the next set of photos are being shared, I'll read Zach's juror statement. It's written in first person as Zach's words. As I read it, it will remain in first person. So please keep in mind, these are Zach's expressive words, not mine. The premise of the question is what drew me to this competition. Early in my career, I wrestled with the term artist to identify myself. And it wasn't until I realized that I was bringing my questions about life to fabric that I understood my personal definition of what makes an artist. Since then, someone who uses material to grapple with life's questions has been my working definition of artist. What I see reflected over and over again in the pieces selected for this exhibit are honest and heartfelt questions artists are exploring in order to make sense about this life. How do we deal with the world changing so quickly around us? From California, from California wildfires to the loss of a loved one, our life can change in a moment, often leaving more questions than answers. Other artists were dealing with quieter questions. Where do I find hope in the small and daily details of life? From the joy of a somersault to honoring a hole in a screen door, we can find reasons for hope all around us if we stay observant. The pieces I ultimately ended up picking, I chose based on a few criteria how well they reflected the brief, the nature of the questions being investigated, and the manner in which the artist explored fabric, color, line, form, and pattern in search of an answer. This collection represents a very strong collection of work full of insight and encouragement, and perhaps ironically, more questions than answers. We'll have to keep our eyes open for those. Zach Foster, jury, juror. The following three, thought, three slides will have no accompanying commentary to distract. And next. The following several slides highlight the April 27th opening reception and artists who are able to attend. Okay, this is a montage of the opening reception. This photo showcases the artists that were able to come to the uh, reception. 
two of our artists, Regina Dunn beside Screen Door with a View and Peg Green beside her work, Somersault. Angie Knowles, one of our speakers this evening, standing with her art, the same, but different. Myself, Diane Powers Harris and Susan Wesley Lumsden, standing with our works, Spirit Owls Offering, Solace and Estuarial Quandaries. Sally Detko and Beth Frisby Wallace, another of our speakers, standing with their works, Urban Jeopardy and Still a Mother, Sister, Friend. Sally Dutko again with her piece with Linda Geiger beside her art, Too Many Choices. Carol Cosmo and Carol um, Kat Compo standing with their art, Party Lights and Sending Kisses to the Moon by Moonlight. So now let's move on to what you've all been waiting for. Let's hear from the artist. Okay, first we'll hear from Gretchen Brooks, Brooks, our artist from Gainesville, Florida, who will talk about her work, Ring the Bell. I want to say good evening to everyone and thank you for coming. Um, I'd first of all like to thank Florida Craft Art for hosting this exhibition. Uh, from what I can see, it looks fabulous. I haven't been able to see it in person, but I hope to soon. Um, I also want to thank um, our local, our Bobby Bow and Diane Powers Harris for uh, being on the exhibition committee. And I wanna give a special shout out to Diane because she has been very, very responsive to all my questions for several years now. And I wanna say that she has been very, very encouraging and urging me to um, apply for a various exhibits. So thank you so much, Diane, for all the hard work. <laughs> this um, exhibit was uh, a departure for me in a couple of different ways. Uh, first of all, the artist question, I actually had the answer before I had the question. This was a, this quilt that I knew I wanted to make. And um, I did come up with a question. And my question is, can fiber art symbolize joy and a sense of having cleared a giant hurdle? And the answer is a resounding yes. I had the... Um, I won't say opportunity, but the occasion last fall to undergo some radiation treatments. And this is for a condition that I have had for many years. I've been through three courses of chemotherapy for almost 12 years now. And last fall was the first time I had radiation. And radiation oncology has a tradition that when you complete your treatment, they have what do they call a bell ceremony. And it is based on ringing an actual bell. For centuries, bells have been the symbol of announcing important um, milestones and information. And they adopted this bell ceremony along with a poem that was written by a cancer patient from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas. And his name is Irv Lemoyne. And the official title of this uh, piece of art is Ring the Bell Three Times Well. And some of you may recognize that title. And if you do, we're all part of the same club. If you don't recognize that title, that's a good thing because it's a club you probably don't want to join. The, the poem that goes along with the ceremony is the following, Ring this bell, three times well, it's told to clearly say, my treatment's done, the course is run, I'm on my way. And for me, this was a very, very emotional experience to do this. Uh, not only does it signify the end of treatment, it signifies hope, satisfaction, resilience, and the expectation of better times to come. And uh, so it was very important to me. As far as the um, quilt itself, I knew that I wanted to use joyful, happy colors for the bells. Uh, and so I chose yellows and oranges and a little bit of purple, not much red because for some strange reason, I am allergic to red. I just almost never use it in, in my artwork. Uh, 
but I made these, they're not quite perfect circles, but um, I did improvisational piecing, which is something I have not done before. Most of my quilts are representational and most of them are raw edge applique or um, collage. But the, these bells had, had a message and I wanted to convey that in, in their happy colors. And then for the background, I wanted to use calmer colors, colors that, that I love, the red, or the, sorry, the purples, the greens, different shades of blue that represent calm and strength. And purple, of course, always represents spirituality. For the, um, my family frequently gets involved when I'm constructing my artwork and has their input. And so they encouraged me to add the clappers on the bells and I put them in different positions to show movement. I also, to amplify that movement, added very narrow curved strips of yellow in between the sets of bells. And then another way that I um, amplified this is in the quilting. And if we could go to the close-up slide, maybe you can see that quilting. I use circular quilting. And um, I think this conveys the, the image of a bell ringing. The other thing I did is I took a picture of the actual bell. It's a big, big brass bell and the poem. And I printed it on fabric and I sewed it onto the back of the quilt. So for me, this is a very personal uh, quilt. The other thing that makes it a departure for me is that it's a slightly abstract, abstracted quilt, which is uh, an area that I've just begun to dabble into. So that is my uh, quilt in this exhibit. And I'm very thankful and grateful that I was chosen to be part of this wonderful exhibit. Thank you, Gretchen. It's a beautiful representation of what was a very difficult period in your life. We appreciate your sharing the emotion that went with this. Now, we'll he hear from Angie Knowles, our artist from St. Petersburg, Florida, and she will speak to her artwork, the same but different. Angie? Thank you, Diane. And I want to echo Gretchen. Um, thank you to Florida Craft Art for supporting Sakura and for supporting Florida artists in general. And having worked on um, this conference, Diane and Bobby, I know how much work goes into <laughs> doing something like this. So thank you for volunteering. So I've been a member of Sakura since 2017. And before I joined, I really didn't think that I was Sakura material but um, a good friend encouraged me to join. And when this call came out, I really didn't think that I had something to submit. I had a difficult time coming up with a question. And then one day it just hit me, I've been asking this question for a very long time. And my question was, how can we as people be created the same yet be so different? And so the phrase the same but different is something my husband and I, we use all the time and he's on the call tonight, hi sweetie. So um, we use that all the time, not just about people but about so many things. And when I thought about it, this is something I've been wanting to portray in fabric for a very long time, but didn't know how until this call to action came. And the first time I really experienced this when we were stationed overseas in Turkey and meeting the Turkish people and realizing the differences in culture, the differences in religion and so many different things. But in the end, it all boiled down to that, even though we were different, we were the same. So we were the same, but different. We all wanted the same things in our lives for ourselves and for our family, for society and all of that. And I realized that in our first tour, and on our second tour in Turkey, we did two tours in Turkey. We actually lived in the village right across the street from the mosque. So that was even brought home even more so. And I see that so much in everyday life that we as people were the same, yet we're different. So to create this piece, I wanted to portray how something that's the same can come out different every time. And my primary medium is rust. 
And I love rust because it's something that's so undesirable, but I find <laughs> it so beautiful. And to create this piece, I created four pieces of fabric using the same metal circle. So I think this was an eight inch diameter circle. And I printed it four times on the same fabric, trying to keep the conditions as close to same as I possibly could with things that I could control. So the things that I can control represent the same, but the things that I could not control represent the different. So I couldn't control the weather. I couldn't control how hot or humid it was, but I could control the piece of metal and the piece of fabric. And then after putting them together on the larger backing, I came back with different colors of um, thread to do all of that fine stitching, which about halfway through, I thought I was crazy to even attempt to do all that stitching. But the stitching to me, it represents how we as people are connected to each other. The mm -hmm. stitching ties these four circles together into one cohesive piece. And it just makes everything work. And to me, that's how I see us as people, our humanity ties us together. Mm -hmm. And it should hopefully one day erase all those differences that we have. And we will realize that we are all the same. It's an awesome piece. I'm really thrilled to hear about all of your thoughts that go along with it. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Okay, now we'll turn to Sherry Lipman McCauley, our artist from Lakeway, Texas, who will share info about her work, Yellow is Joy. Thank you so much. I wanna echo everyone. Thank you to Diane and to Bobby and to Katie for the opportunity to be part of this exhibit. Um, I've been a member of SACWA since 2013 and I became a juried artist member in 2015. I always think it's such a privilege to be included in the juried shows. So my piece, Yellow is Joy, is in answer to why does the color yellow make me smile? And I did some research online. Um, I, I used um, Google, you familiar with Dr. Google? Um, where I typed in asking about the meanings of color. And so yellow is said to be associated with laughter and hope, sunshine, and it's cheery, warm, and joyful. And so this is why I asked the question, what does the color yellow mean to me? The answer, yellow is joy. And during these times when all kinds of things are going on in the world, it's nice to think about something that's upbeat and colorful. This piece was created in a serendipitous way in that I, make my cuts with my rotary cutter and place them together and see if they work visually, put them on the design wall, take them down, snip them, cut them, trim them, and try it again. So I'm working outside my typical um, color palette. I typically paint black on white, but for this exhibit, I wanted to try and pull in something a little bit different. And so what I've done is I've meshed together solid fabrics that I have had kicking around in my stash and um, coupled that with some screen printing that I had done on a Zoom class during these times where I pulled color through a silk screen. And if you look closely at the next detail, you'll notice that the white that you see at the bottom was created with glue resist on a silk screen and then pulled with that okra color through it to get that color. And then the orange was created again with a silk screen cutout paper and I pulled the orange through and then overlaid the okra color on it. And you'll notice my quilting lines are very simple. They're straight lines and they, generally go from edge to edge. I use um, a walking foot on my domestic machine. And when I create, I create in an improv manner and you never know what you're going to get. So 
my my key word is serendipity in that you need to embrace what's different and enjoy the effects. Thank you, Sherry. And it is definitely a very joyful quilt. Um, I particularly like yellow. My house is painted yellow inside and I feel good with it. So I can understand why it gives you joy as well. Now, uh, Beth Frisbee Wallace, our final speaker will uh, for the evening, so will come on. Uh, Residing in New Hampshire, Beth, um, who enjoys a dual regional membership in both New Hampshire and Florida, will discuss her work, still a mother, sister, friend. So I also would like to thank Florida Craft Art for hosting the exhibit and the event, and to um, SACWA Florida members, uh, Diane and, and Bobby, for all they've done to make the exhibit happen. Um, I happen to, uh, like Gretchen, be member of a of a club that nobody wants to join. Um, in, the, in, the fe in February of 2020, my world was shattered by the unexpected death of my husband while we were spending the winter in Florida. Still a mother, sister, friend evolved from the grief journey that I'm on. As a grieving widow, I've become wiser about the process of grieving and mourning. My art provides me with more than a way to express myself. It provides the opportunity to contemplate. During the early period, once my family members had gone home and I was alone, I returned to my quilt art. Art quilts had been a passion before, so they connected me to my past life, something I loved, and provided me with purpose and something within my control when so much of my life was unfamiliar. I began to realize that on the grief journey, part of no longer being a couple is learning to listen to what we as indiv individuals want. We're no longer making decisions based on the preferences of two people. Sometimes that's simply, what do I want to eat for dinner? But I asked the question in my art. I'd been interested in fabric portraiture, so I challenged myself to make a fabric portrait. And unwilling to experiment on someone else's face for fear what it, how it might come out, I pulled out photos that had been taken of me. Over a number of months, I played with different photos, different fabrics and color schemes, different designs in parallel with processing my grief. I assembled faces, fusing together pieces of fabric with no idea how the faces would be used or whether they would even fit together into a cohesive piece. I wondered if, if faces in different colors could be used to portray different emotions felt during grief or portray the roller coaster of intense emotions. And as someone whose past work was all pre-planned before cutting a single piece of fabric, this was improvisational for me. At the time, I calmed any internal questions with the fact that I was delaying big decisions in other aspects of my life. So be patient and see what happens with my art also. By the time the prospectus for the artist question came out, I had a collection of faces and had started thinking about other symbols related to my grief but I still didn't know how the pieces would fit together. Over time, I realized that I was working through at least three questions associated with grief. Who am I now? How do I go on? And where will I go? When I finally figured out that there were three different questions and at least three potential quilts, the design came together. I thought about the fact that the loss of a spouse brings about a consequential loss of identity. As a widow, I'm suddenly considered single, whether I want to be or not. However, we all have many identities in, in our lives that are unchanged by the loss of a spouse. The faces I chose to use for this piece all depict a special day that my husband and I shared in the fall of 2016. I arranged the faces on a wall hanging of traditional blocks to represent the past. It was originally a bright red, white, and black quilt that I'd made in the 1990s and didn't like. With a few coats of white textile paint, the colors were subdued to fade into the background. As I worked on the piece, I realized that I could list my many remaining identities. So that's what I, what I decided to do. And I made paler line drawn faces to intersperse in the arrangement. Those pale faces are made from a translucent non-woven pattern making material and marked with archival ink and placed over light tan fabric cut to the same shape. You can see the list of identities handwritten in my hair. A nationally known grief counselor said, spending time and energy focusing on and expressing your grief is essential self-care. 
You will never get over your grief. Instead, you will learn to live with it. So thank you all for coming and listening to my story. Thank you, Beth. This is an amazing piece, and I'm fortunate that I got to watch the progress of it in our critique group. <laughs> so this is wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, artist, wow. Uh, thank you for your detailed information and um, detailed informative and um, exciting in synopsis of your inspiration, thoughts, and methods of execution of your artwork that was juried into the artist question. Um, this concludes the discussion portion of the individual artworks for our program. Now we'll turn to audience questions. I have a question for Angie Knowles. Um, Angie, when I looked at your piece, it, it almost looked like um, cell division. Did you have that in mind when you were working on this at all? No, not necessarily. The thing with working with rust, you can have something in mind, but it does what it wants to do. Uh -huh. So it may not be what you plan for it to be. So to me, um, a friend once told me, embrace what you get. And that's what I do. Oh, first of all, I mean, thank you. It was, I just loved hearing the panel and everyone talking about how they came about making their, um, their work there. And it's just all beautiful. And the show is just great. And again, thank you to Florida Craft Art. But artist, um, when you submit to a jury show, what do you have in mind? What are you thinking about? Are there any you know, fears other than you won't get into it? You know, what else are you thinking about when you submit to a show there? And any and all could answer that question. Thank you. Well, I think I, there's always the fear that you're not going to get in. But I, I feel well, I love to see exhibits. I love to see other people's artwork. And so I don't mind submitting to an exhibit and not and getting rejection. I mean, I mind a little bit, of course. <laughs> but um, I figure that a Sakwa exhibit, it's well worth the entry price, the entry fee to support the art uh, of the ones who are going to be accepted. And I think it's important for the juror to have a, a sense of a cohesive show. And that's why some don't get accepted, even though they may be perfectly fine art, they just don't go with the others. And I always say, well, sooner or later, another exhibit will come along, try again. And, and it doesn't matter to me because I make the art for myself. Well, Pat, um, I always wonder is, will the juror get what I'm trying to say? You know, does it make sense to someone else besides me? I have two questions. One is, do any of the artists that we're presenting today have websites where we can see more of their work? And the other one is, will this, this uh, exhibit be on uh, a, as a traveling exhibit and where will it be? After it um, leaves Florida Craft Art, it's going to the um, Alliance for Art, for the yeah. Arts. It, that's in Fort Myers and it'll be there uh, June 3rd through 25th. Um, after that, it will be going to Eastern Shore Art Center in Fairhope, Alabama from September 2nd to October 29th. And then it will be going to the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. And that will be from November 12th to around December 31st, might be a little bit earlier than that that it will close uh, due to the holiday. And then it will go to um, the Museum of Texas Tech University. And that will be January 15th to around April 15th. And then it will come back to Florida to the Marco Island Center for the Arts. And that will be our concluding ex exhibition from May 8th to June 30th of 2023. I'm just uh, interested to know from uh, Gretchen and Beth in particular, uh, these pieces that you did uh, were more improv improvised. And I wonder if you are continuing in that vein since then. I did a second one that's improvised with other motifs that um, that I had made around the same time. And actually that answers the question, um, 
how do I go on? And and that has been accepted by um, into Sacred Threads exhibit 2022 and is going to travel for two years in their traveling show. Uh, so I am being more improvisational at the moment anyway. And I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I never know exactly what I'm going to do until I start doing it, basically. <laughs> and, I, and as I said before, I've done mostly collage and raw edge applique, but I kind of enjoyed the, the improvisational aspect, except there is a certain amount of unknown there. I don't know where it's going <laughs> when it starts, but that's kind of fun. And I also just wanted to thank um, Elizabeth Neely for her efforts in putting together uh, the PowerPoint with Diane Powers Harris and also uh, the, the bios. Thank you, Elizabeth. On behalf of uh, both Soccer Florida and our regional exhibition committee, I'd like to thank Katie Dietz, who is the Florida Craft Art Executive Director and her diligent staff, Liz Cooper, Elizabeth Neely, Janie Lorenz, and Julia Culver uh, for this opportunity to share our members' dynamic and thoughtful art with Florida's art appreciating public. And for providing this platform for several of our artists to speak about their art, which has hopefully offered insight into the deep respect they feel for the long history and traditions of quilt making. In fact, our foremothers were known to explore other avenues of quilt making expression, thereby providing the creative springboard for today's art quilters to push the envelope uh, in the creation of their art. So Florida Craft Art is a statewide member supported nonprofit organization. You are invited to visit their website, floridacraftart.org for more information about the organization, their programs and membership. Additionally, while on their site, please take a moment to cast your vote for your favorite quilt in the exhibit. Winners will receive a uh, gift card to the Florida Craft Art Gift Store, which is very generous on Florida Craft Art's part. We appreciate that. So in conclusion, um, thank you for attending our event, and we sincerely trust our joint venture has been informative, providing both eye candy as well as a good understanding about art quilts and their creators.